Hey guys, Lindsay here. I just wanted to go ahead and give you guys an update. I know I haven't um, updated you guys on where I was in my journey to becoming a flight tenant, flight attendant since the last video that I did. I think it was called the, um, the third vlog about my last minute to-do list. But today is January 15th, 2014, and on January 7th I had my interview. And it was a great day. Um, I ended up getting my one-on-one -on -one interview. And I ended up getting fingerprinted. And for those of you who are familiar with this process, those two, um, uh, well, getting a one-on-one -on -one interview and then getting fingerprinted, those two things are imperative. If you don't complete those two steps while you're at the interview, then you're not going to get hired. So you have to be on your toes, be on your best game the whole time that you're in the interview. There's You're in the interview with, um, I was there with at least 30-something other people. And so everyone's fighting for that spot. <laughs> and you got to be on your game the whole time. Um, and at the end, they'll pick and choose who they want to send to the one-on-one -on -one interviews. And then they will also pick and choose a small percentage of who they want to fingerprint. So I was one of those people, and I was very happy about that. So, um, but um, uh, a lot of people have been asking on Indeed Forum, which is a forum that I'm also part of, um, what the interview process is like. And it was actually a really, really good experience. Um, for me, my day started, um, I was flying in and out the same day. And I got up at 2.30 a.m. to start getting ready. <laughs> um, so got up at 2.30 and uh, my, my, my cab was scheduled to come at 4 a.m. I decided we were going to call a cab just to be safe um, because our truck had been acting up and we didn't want to, you know, risk me being late or anything. So 4 a.m. gets there, no cab. So I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, okay, okay. Breathe easy because, you know, let me get myself together. Let me not go there because <laughs> I didn't want to start the day off bad. And the next thing you know, the whole day just keeps spiraling out of control into one big terrible day. So quickly, I um, regained my composure, called a different cab company. It's so hard for some reason to find cabs that are, one, 24 hours, and two, take credit card. So thank goodness I quickly found one that um, covered both of those um, vital pieces of whatever, but I found a cab company that was 24 hours and, um, took credit card. So, um, so he said that he could be there in 15 to 20 minutes and he was right. He was, but during that time for, uh, while I was waiting for the second cab, my fiance came down, kind of gave me a pep talk, you know, told me to stay positive, um, that they was going to go great. Don't let something that small, you know, ruin the whole day. So he was right. And so, um, yeah, he came, um, uh, I got to the airport on time, I had a straight flight um, from my airport to DFW, and um, I actually ended up getting uh, to DFW, I think like 10, 15 minutes early. So, um, you know, from the airport, I caught the shuttle to the uh, training conference center, which is where the interviews were being held. As soon as I entered the building where the interviews were, it was like go time. I was on stage. I was smiling from ear to ear, like, hi, hi, I'm Lindsay. <laughs> I'm a flight attendant. Like, I, I, I put on a show, you know, I made sure that they, you would have thought I was the happiest carefree person in the world. And I'm a happy person. But I wanted to really ingrain it in their brains like I'm the girl from the job like I don't care that my flight got canceled or that somebody is yelling at me I'm still gonna smile I'm I'm happy and carefree and I'm also intelligent and I can speak well and I can answer questions on the spot I'm your girl like I was on point the whole time I wasn't like tacky or anything of course that was a little overboard but you get the point like they want somebody who is going to remain happy and fresh and positive you know, regardless of whatever, regardless if a passenger is mad because their bags are lost, regardless if, you know, you've been on 10 cans or delayed flights, like it just doesn't matter. You have to remain positive and happy and just refreshed. And, you know, they also want you to look polished. I made sure I came decked out in the whole flight attendant-esque, you know, attire. 
I even had like the little scarf around my neck. You know, I had the suit and pants ensemble. Um, I had my hair slicked back, pulled back into a pinwheel um, sock bun thing. Um, so I, I looked pretty darn good, if I must say so myself. Like really refreshed and looked like a flight attendant. I really did. <laughs> um, so yeah, but um, it isn't. It's an intense interview. Like. I was in there with at least 30 something other people and everybody there was like fighting for that spot. It was like a competition, literally. And, um, you know, I could tell a lot of people wasn't really, weren't really sure what to expect. But me, I researched for months before I even knew if I was going to get an interview. So I knew exactly what I was walking into. I knew exactly what we were going to do, like damn near moment to moment. <laughs> like, um... So I was very prepared. I knew what to expect. I knew what was right around the corner. I knew what to do, what not to do, how to act, how not to act, what to look like. And, you know, I was just very prepared and it really paid off. It really did. Um, you know, interact with people, be friendly, you know, be yourself, but, you know, have fun too. Don't goof off. Um, definitely listen and pay attention, eye contact. Um, remember all the recruiters names and you know address them by name um, one thing that one of the recruiters said there was she couldn't believe how many of the women had worn their hair down and that's something that I think was an issue for them they really really want you to pull your hair back because not only sanitary reasons like you're serving people on an airplane food you don't want your hair in their food um, but it's, it also just makes you look more polished and, and more professional so, um, um, but yeah, it was, it was overall, it was a good day. It was very intense. Like I said, everybody was competing for that spot. And at the end of the day, um, they'll go ahead and discreetly call out, um, well not, no, I can't say discreetly. They call everyone out one by one. And the diff, the only difference is, is that, um, some people, when they call them out, they will ex escort them out of the building and others, they'll call out to do a one-on-one. -on -one and then um, fingerprinting. And I was one that got called, I think I was like called third or fourth to go get my one-on-one -on -one interview and then go get fingerprinted. And um, oh, I was so happy when that happened because <laughs> I wasn't sure for a while. Like, you know, we, we went in there, we did our group activity. Then, you know, we went out and separated, they separated everyone into groups of four or five and we did our group interview. And then they brought us all back in for kind of like a day in the life of a flight attendant. And, you know, it was, um, Actually, am I supposed to say all that? Okay, I don't think it's such a big deal. I really didn't get too specific. But um, besides, you can find all that stuff online anyways, like I did. Okay. So, um, but yeah, so when we were back in the um, the big conference room, I'm thinking like, okay, have they been calling people out to get fingerprinted yet? Like, are they going to do that? Like, what's going on here? I was like freaking out because it was, I had to catch my shuttle to go back to the airport in like less than an hour. And the interview wasn't even over yet, and to my knowledge, they hadn't been calling people back yet. And I don't know, it was just, I was just being overly whatever. I was like frantic. I was like, please, like, I'm, <laughs> I've been researching and studying and talking into a mirror and talking online to interactive interviews and just practicing, practicing since October. Like, I gotta get this. But um, shortly after, they, they came in and they started doing one on ones or excuse me, calling people out one by one. And um, it was a great day, though. I met a lot of awesome people. And, um, yeah, so, you know, the next day I got my email telling me that I was moving on in the process. And um, they sent me some forms that I had to fax back. And so now I'm, I, I play the waiting game. Once my um, background check clears, as well as the um, paperwork, they will send me the official job offer and then they will schedule me for my medical and then once my medical clears they will then schedule me for my eight and a half weeks of training and that my friends is what you want to get to because even when you get to this training though it's still not over because you have to pass training and training is no joke um, and it's eight and a half weeks I'll be away from my family I'll be away from my baby my three-year-old son I'm gonna miss him so but um, I'm pretty sure that, you know, you just got to remember what you're there for. But, um, yeah, so right now my goal is to make sure I get a training date and I get to training. Once that's done, um, I'll worry about getting through training when I get there. 
right now I gotta make sure I get the date and I know that in the um, process that I'm in right now this part of the process it could take a week to two months who knows um, background checks can take a while or or not I guess it just depends on where you live or whatever other factors okay so I'm rambling I'm not sure if I should re-record this because I feel like I sound stupid in some parts but but this is real so I'm not gonna re-record this um, make sure if you guys have any questions about the interview process or the online interview um, the web interview or anything or any application paperwork let me know subscribe like blah 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 comment you know the whole spiel um, if you have any questions about actually being a flight attendant and buddy passes and percentages and payments and whatever, I don't have all that info yet. I'm pretty sure that when I get to training and actually start flying as a flight attendant, um, I'll be able to answer all those questions then. And um, when I do start flying, state to state, out of state, whatever, out of the country, you guys are coming with me and you'll get to see hotel rooms and where I'm eating at and who I'm meeting and what I'm doing, where I'm going, and how I'm living. All right? So until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.